Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Xenogears. Last time we set off the uh, sand sensors so that we could open the gate there and get out of here. But in order to do that, we have to talk to Old Man Bal first. Meanwhile, um, in the last episode, I fought a bunch of enemies off screen, and as I did so, I gained enough levels to learn Rhythm Shock for Bart there. Now, both that and Hagen for Faye allow me to use a new set of Death Blows, which means I can build my attack power up to level 2 in a gear, and then press the square button for my first attack, and do a triangle for my next attack, which will be a Death Blow. So I have the ability to do that. Though, for the most part, it's usually more effective to just do a single X attack and then on your next turn do a triangle and square for a Repu or a Beat Serpent. And that usually leads to more damage over time, more DPS, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, it just saving up for those big attacks is only helpful if you're trying to avoid counterattacks, which we don't have a lot of uh, to deal with at this point. So anyway, with that being said, let's uh, head on in here. We don't need to press any buttons to get out of our gear. We, As soon as you approach the door, you automatically go in there. So anyway, let's uh, talk to Old Man Bal here. Why haven't you done that? There's that big door. And apparently all he has to do is press a button and magically it opens up for us, which is very, very nice. We can actually get our asses out of here. Wouldn't be fun to spend the rest of the game in this cave. Especially with that mayfly running around from last time. It's not all that bad if you've upgraded your engines and have more damage output, but uh, if you haven't done that, you are going to be in a world of hurt against that guy. Just like you'll be in a world of hurt against the boss if uh, you haven't done that either. The deal is done. Oh, yeah? Far superior to all other gears. The god gear. Hidden away somewhere. Um, I, he said a gear, not a god. A power of a thousand gears. Destroy whole cities. That sounds deadly. The Omni Gear. So yeah, the idea here is this Omni Gear that Bart has heard of that's supposed to be super powerful may have been one of the uh, giants that uh, the old humans, the humans before our current uh, series of humans was uh, something that they created in order to fight God with. Just legends. They don't really exist. Anyway, allow me to take a look at your gears. He let us go all the way out there and fight a mayfly, which I guess is only a normal enemy. But still, he did that before fixing up our gears. And again, he still hasn't mentioned all the problems that uh, uh, Faye's gear was having before we got down here. Presumably, those issues get fixed here as well. But it's kind of annoying that they don't mention it. Oh? What are the chances of that happening? <laughs> mm -hmm. A few hundred year old. Nowhere near as old as the gear in that Legends. Okay, so I guess not. Why were they in the ground? No records, except... Except what? Well, yeah, after a great war, but who knows what kind of a war that was. And it probably wasn't a war between humans and God. No records from the last several hundred years. Hmm. Oh, the ethos control the records from that time period. So maybe there are records, 
but the church is kind of hiding them. They're not really a church. They're a religious organization more than anything else. They do have a church element to them, but they're not like basically going around as the church and saying this must be done and that must be done or anything like that. What do you make of the old man? What do you mean? Why not? Digging for ancient gears, ancient treasure, something like that. Yeah, of course you did. It's kind of what he said he's doing, so it's not really a joke. It's exactly what he said he's doing. That old man is up to something. This can't be. What's wrong? Oh. Well, yeah, kind of, sort of, not really. Um, I'm borrowing it. Yeah, good excuse, buddy. Whoa, what's with that hue? The host for the spirit of the Slayer of God. Haven't I heard that before? You didn't say anything. Slayer of God, we have heard that before. Who, who said that before? I, I can't remember. Well, he actually kicks us out of the house at this point. We can go back and um, do up our gears again, but he won't actually talk to us. Well, the other person we heard say that before, the Slayer of God business, was actually Graf. But if you tell me, or he tells you nothing, I have nothing more to say. Calamity beats you. Now, here's a nice little hint that you're going to fight a boss. They've capitalized Calamity, and yeah, he just expects to get them back anyway. Anyway, so we're just going to go back and do some more for gear. Basically, I'm just going to tune up. Oh, I guess we got an automatic tune up. Yeah, we got an automatic tune-up. Perfect. I just wanted to check in case. Anyway, with that being said, let's get ourselves on out of here. There's nothing more we can do at this point. And, in fact, I'm going to make a little save file here and do a test run against the upcoming boss, and I will see you in a moment. Okay, we're back. And, for the most part, I just wanted to uh, give a quick test run to the boss because I haven't done it in a few days. So hopefully there aren't any hiccups. Uh, I didn't experience any when I actually fought them there. So, And as we go through here, we encounter this thing, which... Does it say it's not working? All right, does it say? Yeah, main power is off. Now in order to turn it on, we head over here, approach this, and we get an option to hop on the gondola, which unfortunately is murderously slow. So fast forward. And we pop over here. Check out the uh, power generator. And of course that's off, so let's turn that on there for us. And pop back over here. Pop back into the gondola. Fast forward again. And we uh, go back in our gears now. And now the lift is working, so we hit the, uh, the X button there. And we made it down to the next floor. Now over here... No, wrong way. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to see around here. Looks like there's uh, some excavation, excavation, if I could make words that would be, uh, of course, beneficial, uh, around here. And there's also a save point, and if you haven't saved in a while, I suggest you use it, because if you're not prepared, upcoming boss will kick your ass. I'm saved up there by Old Man Bal, so I think I'm good. Uh, do note that there are a lot, it seems to be a high encounter rate for the Mayfly around here, so I would recommend running at this point. Uh, there's no point in really fighting him anyway, he's just going to use up all of your excess uh, fuel and uh, do lots of damage. Now the road's broken here, and this flying thing seems to be uh, doing tricks around the stalagmites, so yeah... Any anyone dealt with that's the boss? Yeah, not many. So yeah, we're gonna have to fight you. So let's just pop down here. And I think we go around to this side. Yeah. 
and this will trigger him to come in for a little landing here. I don't know who this is. Now, if you saw that little pause show up, it seems to do that when I play this game. I don't know why. Anyway, this is the Calamity. Now, the way I have my gear set up, I have enough fuel to do this the way that I want to. Make sure you buy the engine upgrades, otherwise you're going to have a horrible time with this fight. You don't need anything else. You really don't. So, initiate booster at the start of the battle. Uh, wild smile as soon as possible. This will lower his accuracy and his evasion, most importantly his accuracy, and which limits two of his big attacks from being hit you very effectively. That would normally do a butt ton more than it is. So, there we go. And basically we're just going to alternate between hitting the X button, let's go and put a booster on you too, and uh, then doing record. There's not a lot of point in doing anything more than that unless... Yes, this one shouldn't do as much damage either. Nope, it actually hit me. That's, that's not great, but that's not too bad either. That one doesn't do as much damage as uh, some of his other attacks. He does have one attack that will still do quite a bit of damage to you, but uh, I'm not too worried. Since I have the time, I might as well show off the next level of uh, Death Blow there. But, for the most part, you really don't need to worry about it. So in order to do that, you need to build up two attack levels. Here's the rocket punch again. Ow! Of course, that one was guarded. You saw the red there. Now hit the uh, square button from here. And we have Pazen, which will do a bit more damage. But it's not worth it, as you can kind of make out. And in this case, we have Blood Snake. Yeah, I'd much rather just do a single X attack followed by a, uh, a Repu or a Beat Serpent. It's just more effective in the long run. And it's, uh, it'll kill the enemy faster, meaning less hits against you than, say, saving up to do a super powerful attack that isn't really going to do, like, you don't need to do the full amount of damage to kill the guy. As you can see, it's not really worth saving it up. See, this attack can still hit you. This one does a lot of damage. So, kind of be aware of that. Yeah, lots of damage. He shouldn't be able to hit you with that more than uh, more than twice. Sometimes he'll spam the attack. Uh, hopefully, that doesn't happen to you. If so, you might be in a little bit of trouble. But as long as you've hit Wild Smile on him from the start, there is not a whole lot to worry about in this fight. As you can see, we're running low on fuel, but we should be able to take him down before we run out of there. In fact, it should be within another round or two. If he starts hitting you with his attacks, uh, you may want to uh, renew Wild Smile. I think it lasts for somewhere between three and five turns. I, I can't remember for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, um, you shouldn't need to do much else. Initiate Booster and start wailing away on him. Uh, booster is a, a unique uh, ability uh, because it's basically haste, right? But, of course, it kills you faster than if you run out of fuel. You can't make any actions. There we go. Now, if you get to a point where you're going to run short, you will want to obviously uh, eliminate Booster and start charging. But once you get do that, you get into kind of a routine where you're not gaining enough back and you're losing too much HP, and the boss guy becomes a lot more difficult than it really needs to be. Uh, Initiating a uh, booster in every every boss fight with gear is not a good idea. In a lot of boss fights, it's unnecessary, and in a lot, it just doesn't help. So, anyway, this one, it doesn't hurt, and it probably gets the battle done a little bit faster. So Anyway, we managed to take this guy down, which is nice. And, of course, Faye is going to be silent. We have uh, the squall treatment there for a little bit there. Lots of ellipses. Nice! Get ourselves right out of here. Or not. Bart. How did it get back up? We already beat this thing. Whoa. 
heartbeat. What do we got here? Ow. Whoa. What kind of an attack was that? Why didn't I get to this in the battle? One shot it and it disintegrated? Holy crap. Faye, what's going on there? Huh? Doesn't he know? Well, I, um, I don't know. Yeah, unfortunately, Faye has no idea how this happened. Why didn't you use that technique in the middle of battle? Yeah, I kind of already said that, but uh, I don't even know how I did that technique. That just spur of the moment kind of came to me. I, I don't even know what I did. Anyway, yeah. Who cares for now? We'll just kind of let that sit to the sidelines. Anyway, now that we got rid of that guy, let's get out of here. Let's see here. See if I can get through the upcoming uh, set of dialogue in a timely manner. That's the wrong side, isn't it? Yes, it is. So you want to head on this side and go around this way. I can't remember if they have any more battles around here. They probably do. But anyway, there we go. And we've made it out of the caves. Now, make sure you pick up the items that were in there. The uh, gold nugget and the, uh, I think it was the G-Whip. Uh, one of the G-Whips, Iron G-Whip, whatever I got there for uh, Bart's gear because you can't get back in there as far as I know, ever. So, yeah. I would definitely pick up those items now. Uh, I don't think we ever go back there, though. Okay. No king living there. Oh, your hometown. Well, that's cool course that makes Faye feel uh, a little disappointed and depressed I'm sure but makes sense um no no I don't know why they would put such an old reference in there but oh well I guess it's good for a little laugh the rendezvous viewpoint with the Yggdrasil is I believe how you pronounce that now the Yggdrasil uh, in mythology is the uh, great Norse tree that stretches uh, between the nine different worlds I'm sure this has come up in one of the Thor movies I watched the first one I didn't watch the second one I haven't seen the second uh, Avengers movie yet so I don't know if they've mentioned it further in there I think they mentioned it a little bit in the first Thor movie but Anyway, it's the basic idea of the... It's this great tree that stretches across to all the different worlds. You know, Midgard, and I think Earth is one of them. Uh, and Stovokor, no. And the, whatever the other one is, I think that uh, all the, the Greek gods live in. I can't remember. I think Midgard is technically Earth, which, of course, is uh, cool if you think about uh, the term Midgar in Final Fantasy VII and what that represents in comparison to the, the great tree. But anyway, we're meeting up, or, well, Bart is meeting up with the Yggdrasil, which is that sand cruiser that uh, we saw, you know, basically attack the ship that we were being held on. And it has cool new music. I think this is new music, anyway. Anyway, Satan, of course, is here, as we saw in an earlier cutscene. As uh, are, of course, now... Bay and Bart and our gears. And we get an apology. Well, isn't that nice? Probably not going to get one from Bart, though. The Sand Pirates leader, Master, Master Bartholomew. Uh, of course not. Um, yeah, I told him I was wrong, right? <laughs> yeah, he didn't apologize. Ah, the first mate. 
didn't we already get this introduction between Satan and, uh, well, I'll let him introduce us. His name is Sigurd. Now, I don't know if there's any significant reference to Sigurd, and I may have referenced that or talked about that last time that uh, we saw him, but anyway, if there was, then I think I talked about it. If not, then oh well. Anyway. Yeah, I don't think he's going to. And he's getting pulled away by his ear. <laughs> Wait in our cabin until we arrive. Oh, well, that's nice. You look down. Hmm? Something happened, didn't it? No, nothing at all. I just used a technique that I've never seen before to defeat a very massive enemy that was kicking the crap out of everybody. Now, you can go into here, and uh, throughout the game, you can talk to these people will tell you different things about the gear. If you go from the front, the back, the low down, it's pointless. It'll tell you little bits of information, whether it's a heavy gear or a light gear, whether it's more magical or more physical or whatever, but uh, I wouldn't worry too much. Now, one thing I would like to do now, now, unfortunately, I kind of spoil a little bit here, nothing major. I already kind of mentioned it, uh, the fact that we're going to be on the ship for quite some time. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm kind of referencing the fact that uh, we will be here. Also, even though he's no longer in our party, we can still upgrade the Brigandier. Now, I still have some things to say about the Brigandier, but not until a different plotline is revealed. So, Bart, even though we've... We're kind of at odds with him, Faye and Bart are kind of at odds with each other, are going to stick around at least for a little while. So, at that being the case, we can actually buy additional parts. Now, the Snap a G Whip isn't worth it. For two more attack power, it costs 2000 G, not worthwhile. As far as parts go, we have a whole bunch of new parts here. We have the Motion Guard, prevents slow. Uh, we have AR Repair, prevents loss of armor defense, so basically your armor gets damaged and you can use, still use the inner healing to restore that if you would want to, or equip this to prevent it. I don't care for most gear status effects, they just uh, aren't worth protecting against. We have fuel leaks and drainage. A fuel leak is obvious, I can't remember what drainage does. Uh, engine guard, I think this is kind of like um, reducing your attack. So you can protect against that. It doesn't come up very often. Camera damage is blindness. Now, uh, we've already seen the C circuit, I believe. Defense circuit, pointless. Uh, I don't even think it has any base defense value. It just says it increases defense, which I don't think it actually does. So never buy that. Now, uh, Faye comes with the old circuit, which increases your response by 10. The response circuit ups it by 20. The mag magnetic coat ups it by 25. As you can see with the price difference between the magnetic coat and the response circuit, the extra 5 points is worth quite a bit more than it probably should. So, in time I will be picking up some extra response circuits to equip on the gears that I will be using because what the response does, if you remember, is it ups accuracy and evasion, which, considering we can't really up our defense by a whole lot right now, the uh, best item we have is defense plus five, uh, it's not really all that worthwhile using. So I'm going to stick to response circuits when I can and try and increase my evasion more than my defense. Uh, speaking of defense, though, there are a few things that I would like to do here. Now, as you can see, the frame here, we only have one, and that's for the Weltall. It has 3,000. The best we could have gotten in the cave was 2,500, which is why I didn't upgrade, because I knew I didn't need it for that boss fight. But here, we can upgrade our armor to MS-9. If we continue with the plotline, it'll take us to a town where we can upgrade it by 6 to MS-6 instead of MS-9 or MS-7.5 or something like that. So I want to obviously upgrade here. Um, now, according to my notes, I want to upgrade the Brigandier's armor, and that's pretty much it. I don't want to give him the new engine, which is the Z9, so we've got 90 output instead of uh, 60. 
I actually don't want to make that upgrade, and we'll go into why eventually. But uh, for now, that's all we need to do there. Uh, for the Weltall, we definitely want to do that, and we want to upgrade his uh, frame as well. As you can see, that's quite a bit more. And we want to do the armor. And of course, we want to do fuel at the end. That's pretty much all I want to get for now. Uh, like I said, I will probably uh, probably be going back and getting spawn circuits on my own time as soon as I get you know, enough money. Uh, speaking of money, uh, let's see here. Can we sell anything? Oh, I can't sell my normal items here. Never mind. Anyway, that's pretty much all we've got for now. Anyway, we'll talk to a couple of people and then we'll call it an episode. Okay. Sure thing, buddy. Uh, that's uh, one of the uh, Ma Maitreya. I believe that's one of the commanders of the uh, forces that come out of here. They mentioned that when the gear was talking to Sigurd when uh, Satan was talking to him on top of the deck in that little cutscene there a few episodes back. Uh, no, thank you. I don't want anything to do with uh, weird things on gears. And I will get into that part more way later. Well, not way later, but later-ish. Anyway, with that being said, that's pretty much all the time I have for this episode. Let's play Xenogears. Next time, we are going to continue exploring the Yggdrasil. And hopefully, we'll be able to uh, find out uh, how to move forward. I think we're just supposed to rest in the room, but I haven't really checked. So, anyway, that's all for this one. And I'll see you guys next time.